Ernesto's out of town again. He's getting to travel the world. I'm going to be critiquing images again for Ernesto. Um, you might find I'm not as nice as Ernesto. Um, I feel like I'm going to be really kind of tough this week. So look out and uh, for those that submitted, um, hope you have a thick skin because I'm coming for you. If you guys want to submit your image to be critiqued, please join our Facebook group. It's called Fine Art Photography and Modeling. In that group, I created a specific thread where you could submit your images to be critiqued. Hi everyone, uh, Ben Scott here again. Um, I'll be filling in this Monday's critique while Ernesto's away. So we're about to get started. Um, we have two images submitted this week again that I will be critiquing. Um, there's different techniques that I'm going to be discussing here. Um, one of the main ones is vignetting. When to vignette, when to add a vignette, what is vignetting, and <clears throat> should you add it, should you fix it, replace it. So that will be one topic that we'll be covering here in this video. Um, so let's get started. The first image we have here, right, right here, is uh, submitted from and um, like I said before at the intro talking about vignetting so what is a vignette? Vignette it can be caused by different things one is uh, it can be light fall off two it could be added in post and it could be caused from either your light source or just different lenses create different uh, fall off too. So depending on which lens you're using, um, vignetting can actually occur there as well. Um, so we're looking at this image and to me the vignetting kind of shows um, that it's been added later in post. And to me it's a big distraction in this image. It's way overdone and um, if I were you, I would either just don't worry about adding vignetting at this point um, or really lower your opacity on your vignetting. Make it as subtle as possible. You want it to draw the, the viewer in. When it's successful, you want to do this really subtle so you don't even really notice that it's there. You want it to gradually fade and then to where your subject is. In this case, in this image, it's just overdone. Um, I find this common in newer photographers really will rely on vignetting as kind of their, their effect that they, they like to add. Um, other people will do it where they use a white vignette and it's kind of cloudy on the outside. I, I would stay away from that as well. It just, um, it kind of shows um, I would say almost like an amateur effect um, and really you see it really when photographers are just starting out so it's kind of stay stay away from those two things another thing with this image um, looking at it it kind of has a, a, a sepia tone to it again I would if you're going to go black and white just go full black and white um, this is again another effect that I see is kind of common in photographers that are just starting out. Um, they they want to give it this kind of dated old look and it does look, it looks dated and, and it does do that but is that really what you're trying to do with this image? Create an old time look because there's other effects and things you could do to it as well in post. Um, but when you're starting out, I would just focus on just, let's just get this image right in camera, not worry about any kind of effects or anything. Let's just get it, get it posed right, lit right, and exposed right, and start there. Um, don't worry about these little 
effects or crutches that some people use. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the pose of this image. The pose is pretty good. Um, there are a couple things I like to stay away from. One is you really want to show a, a long neck. So be careful of hands that are blocking. Um, I find this pretty common is you'll see models posing with both hands over their neck and you can't see their neck. A really a long, a long neck is really flattering. So shoot so that you can see the neck and it's long and extended. Um, blocking to me is something that I try to avoid and have my models avoid. And you're having a good job of her putting her knee in to kind of create some shape again. Great job there. Um, one thing I would also, it's not really something to avoid, but I think in this case, it wasn't as successful as you'd like, is her expression. She's, her eyes are closed, but it doesn't look like it's kind of an intentional close. It almost looks like you caught a blink and um, I would just be cautious of that. You want to really get the best expression out of your subject. Really, you could start there. Just from the beginning, focus on the best expressions you can possibly get out of your models and everything else will kind of fall into place. An image doesn't have to be technically perfect, but if you can really nail a feeling or an expression, that's, that's really um, when a, a photograph is successful. So looking at this image, I would say that this photographer is probably pretty new to photography. So again, thank you for submitting this image and really um, letting us critique it. That's awesome that you're really stepping out there and putting your work forward and allowing me the opportunity to critique it. And just keep keep doing that. Um, you're, you'll learn and you'll grow. Just keep pushing yourself um, and you'll just keep getting better. Let's rate this image here. Um, again, we talked about, I'm going to start with post-processing. Um, I think that it shows kind of an amateurish post-processing. Um, again, I would stay away from the, the vignette uh, and the, the sepia tone. So I'm going to give that a one for post work. Pose, I'm going to give this a three for pose. I think it's it's definitely headed in the right direction. And then for expression, I'm going to give this a two. So an overall score of a two. Thanks again for submitting this image. Okay, let's look at the second image here. This image was submitted by, and I want to first, again, thank you again for submitting this image. Um, we're going to start off with one of the great things about this image is the color choice. Um, Complementary colors are always a great thing to use to really make the image pop. And by using orange and combining orange and blue, it really does that for you. Your image is popping out, your subject's popping out. Great job. To me, your lighting here, um, the lighting to separate the subject from the background is pretty harsh. I think you've overexposed on the arm and the side of the face. For my taste, I would have toned that down and brought that down a stop or two. The other thing is, watch, be very careful and watch where the light is hitting on your subject's eyes. The eyes are the most important that really have um, really lit well. Um, the light is kind of, the harsh light from the side is really creeping into the, the subject's right eye and you want to really be careful of that. So either reposition your light a little bit or flag it off from the eye so that the light doesn't, it's really hitting right here in the lower part of the eye and it's kind of distracting. But at the same time, you're not getting enough light on that side of the view of the subject's eye. So you have a bright spot here, but then the other part of the eye isn't quite um, fully exposed and coming out. And for the mood of this image, it's not really a dark, moody image. So 
you would want to make sure that you have the light um, hitting the subject's face there. One thing you could have done for this image is just used a, a bounce card or, or something that white just to fill in just a little bit more on that side of the face. Just uh, have the light bounce off of um, either some white foam core or reflector or something and just fill in a little bit more on um, your subject's face. Just a little bit um, on the lighting there. So now I'm going to talk about pose, which I brought this up in the other image too, about, about hands and, and neck. To me, try and have your model have the longest neck possible. You don't want to block it with hands. Ha hands blocking the neck, two hands up. Um, it's just something to, to really, it's, you really have to get it just right for it to work. Although it's really difficult. So I would kind of shy away from two hands up um, by the neck. What is the reason behind the hands? And why is the model placing her hands around her neck like that? It always just makes me, it, it distracts me from the image. It makes me think about it and wonder about it. And that's one of the things you don't want to have happen is someone to be focusing on the wrong elements in the image. I would leave one hand down and one hand up, but be careful about her, like I, I said before, um, use the flow posing, don't just have her just place the hand there, because it really makes you wonder why. Why does she have her hand up? What's the point of her hand? Um, in this case, is it to show off the bracelets around her wrists? Is that um, the point? Because there's no jewelry on her fingers, so you're not. It's not really a, a jewelry shot where you're showing off jewelry. So why place hands up? One great thing about this image that I really like is you are definitely connecting with your model. Her expression, her smile it seems really genuine and not forced. It's relaxed. Um, Great job there. Um, I think you did a great job of connecting with your model, and um, it's, to me, that's that's where it all all starts again. That connection. Um, good job there. Another thing with this image you might want to look at is um, it's just cleaning up a little bit of her. There's some marks on her arms. Um, I would either dodge and burn those out or use your, your clone stamp or your healing brush and kind of clean up any marks on the arm. Um, other than that, the skin looks really nice and it's really well executed image. So I'm gonna rate this image. I'll give the lighting a three, I will give the pose a two, and I will give the expression a four, so that'll give us an overall score of a three. Thank you again, Ernesto, for letting me critique these images. I know it's really difficult to put yourself out there and um, have someone look at your work and critique your work, but that's really the best way to grow as an artist is to get positive feedback from someone and to put yourself out there and just keep continuing to learn continuing to push yourself and that's and just keep doing it keep trying keep trying new things some things work some things don't work but you'll never get better if you don't push yourself out there and get out of your comfort zone and try try new things so again thank you Ernesto um, it's been a pleasure that is it thank you very much for watching this video guys if you enjoyed it Hit that thumbs up button, share this video with your friends and family, and please put some feedback down below and let me know what you think about this video. And guys, if you got this far in the video, you must be enjoying this content and you must be enjoying this channel. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next Monday.